بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو سالار خان یوٹیوب چینل ویئر ٹو ڈے وی اینالائز این انسولیٹڈ اسٹرنگ کنزسٹنگ آف فائیو اسٹرنگس فائیو انسولیٹڈ ڈسکس بفور دیٹ وی اینالائز اسٹرنگ آف فور ڈسکس بائی این ادر میتھڈ یو نو ان دا پریویس ویڈیوز یو ہیو سین تھری ڈسکس ود آؤٹ گارڈرنگ ود گارڈرنگ دین فور ڈسک ود آؤٹ ود گارڈرنگ دا وی کے میتھا بک سیز دیٹ وین دا نمبر آف ڈسکس انکریز دا نمبر تھری then the KCL method that we previously used that becomes more laborious and time consuming so let us get another method right a simpler one where we will do a little bit of an assumptions and I will go I will you know discuss it with the help of the examples in the VK Mehta book 8.6 is the example number which has got four insulator discs so let's say this is disk number one number two number three and number four so it's got four insulator disks this is the line voltage v and this is the tower which is grounded fine then you've got your shunt capacitances okay yes yes now we named all of these as ccc and this one as some percentage of this C now in this particular thing the method he says that replace its replace the capacitances by its equivalent reactances replace the capacitance by its equivalent reactance which means what C by XC and then assume and give it some value and do your calculations and how is that so let's see now he says that when three when the number of discs exceeds three so this method becomes liberal this particular method that we are discussing for more number of discs this is equally applicable to two and three discs as well you can try it out yourself for now let's say I take the book question he says what in example number 8.6 that a string of four insulators has a self capacitance equal to 10 times the pin to earth capacitance self capacitance is this C let's say all of this I, I, I name it as C this is what we mentioned right and this one is C1 the, the, the the pin to earth or the shunt capacitance so he says that the self capacitance is equal to 10 times the pin to earth capacitance find this voltage distribution across the string expressed as a percentage of the total voltage and then the string efficiency so this is basically the same question as we've previously been discussing so what do we do in this method we replace c by xc so if i have a look over here so c to c1 is equal to 10 isn't it it is so so this implies what that my xc to xc1 would be equal to 1 over 10 isn't it like this it is or xc1 is equal to 10 times xc fine yes now basically all these capacitances are equal we, we saw we know it and all these capacitances are equal we know it so we give this a value we give it a value and we do our calculations so he says that suppose say that my xc is equal to 1 ohms so if my xc this now i have replaced by an xc right yes xc1 similarly so if my xc is equal to 1 ohms my xc1 would be equal to 10 ohms so this would imply then xc1 is equal to 10 ohms is that fine it is and he says what that assuming a current of 1 ampere in the top disk say current in top disk is 1 ampere 
which means that if I write if this is my I1 this is the voltage drop V1 this is my I2 voltage drop V2 I3 voltage drop V3 I4 and voltage drop V4 the shunt current the leakage currents are IA IB IC so this implies that he says that I4 is equal to 1 ampere now I can do my calculations till now this is basically the method capacitances by reactances give a value to one of them and the top disk current is 1 ampere now let's see what happens now if this is 1 ampere so if V is equal to IZ we have what we have V is equal to IZ right we are using this we are IX or IZ whatever it is so V4 comes out to be I4 multiplied by XC4 so 1 multiply 1 V4 is equal to 1 volt correct correct V3 V3 would be I3 multiplied by XC which is the same I3 is what I4 plus a IC I4 plus IC multiplied 1 of course where you have the value of I4 is 1 and plus IC is what IC is have a look the voltage through this XC1 we, uh, the current through this XC1 so voltage upon XC1 the voltage is the same V4 and XC1 is 10 V by X so this is 1 upon 10 point 0.1 so this comes out to be this means that my V3 comes out to be what 1.1 volt V2 would be I2 times XC where I2 is what it is I3 plus IB I3 plus IB I3 you have calculated is 1.1 plus IB have a look is the current through this one the, 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 the reactance is 10 whereas the voltage across this is have a look this is connected across this point or which means this point so across these two points why because all of these are the same so the voltage across this is what V4 plus a V3 so V4 plus V3 upon this X so V4 is 1 plus V3 is 1.1 so well I need to do the calculations uh, so so let us do it together I may have it over here as well well I'll just take it from the book so voltage across the third unit is 1.31 volts 1.31 volt V2 comes out to be 1.31 volts similarly V1 would be I1 multiplied by XC where I1 is the sum of I2 and IA so I2 you have is, is 1.31 and IA is what it is the current through this reactance of 10 ohms and this is connected across this point over here so the voltage across this is V2 plus V3 plus V4 so 1 plus 1.1 plus 1.31 you carry out the calculation V1 comes out to be 1.65 volts fine yes V1 plus V2 plus V3 we know the voltage obtained across the string would be what voltage obtained across the string would be V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4 1 plus 1.1 plus 1.31 plus 1.65 comes out to be 5.06 volts this is the total voltage obtained across the string now the percentage of each string you can carry out each string voltage each disk voltage as percentage of total so how do you do this for the first you will have what is V1 upon total V right V1 upon total V multiplied by 100% which is what V1 is 1 no no uh, for the first first I go with this order right so first V1 is equal to 1.65 upon 5.06 multiplied 100% the first one gives you a share of how much 32.6% 32.6% 32 
The second one is taking how much? V2 is 1.31 upon 5.06 multiplied 100% gives you 25.9%. Similarly, the third, similarly, the fourth. Or let us, you know, just write it. 1.1 upon 5.06 multiplied 100%, of course, gives you something about 21%. The fourth gives you 1.5. No, 1. 1. 1 upon 5.06 multiplied 100% gives you 19.7%. Is that fine? It is. Similarly, you can find out the string efficiency and the string efficiency is what? It is the total voltage V 5.06 multiplied by the number of disks which are 4 multiplied by the voltage that is nearest V1 is 1.65 times V. Right? Uh, this comes out to be how much? 0 0.76. 0 0.76 which means that my string efficiency is a 76 percent is that fine it is this is for a four disk string similarly i can have it for a disk of five strings and let me just draw it over here this is unit number one two three four five and my line conductor and similarly I have what this is my ground structure I would just write it directly that that what that this is my XC all of them I have directly replaced it fine similarly this is my XC1 I have replaced it by its equivalent reactance the currents are I1, I2, I3, I4 and I5 whereas the leakage currents are IA, IB, IC and ID. The voltage drops V1, V2, V3, V4, V5. Can you not do it by yourself? You can but let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's see what he says in the question is, it is example number 8.7 of the book. He says that a string of five insulators is connected across a 100 kV line. So the voltage is given which is 100 kilovolts. Uh, if the capacitance of each disk to earth is 0.1 which means C1 is equal to 0.1 times what the capacitance of the insulator calculate the distribution of the voltage and then again the string efficiency so again what do you have is we will do what we will replace the capacitance by its equivalent reactance so if C1 to C is 0 0.1 this means that XC1 to XC would be 10 right so I would have what that XC1 is equal to or XC1 is 10 times XC now again I will give it a value and let's say for my simplicity I will take it as unity as the book has taken you can take it any other values let's say you take it at 2 ohms fine then depending on this given ratio you will do what this would imply that my xc1 would be 10 ohms right yes now again he says what this is the first assumption step number one is what to replace a capacitance by reactance the second step is to give it a value and depending on the ratio take the second value and step number three is to assume a current in the top disk to be 1 ampere and now in step number 4 find the voltage distributions so V5 would be I5 times XC V5 is I5 times XC which is 1 I5 is 1 1 V5 is 1 volt V4 would be I4 multiplied by 1 I4 is I5 plus a I D 
I5 plus ID multiplied 1. I5 is 1 plus ID is what? ID is the current through this XC whose value is 10 and the voltage across is have a look it's across these two points. So the voltage across this is V5 which is 1. So this comes out to be 1.1 volts. V4 is 1.1 volts. Fine? Yes. Similarly V3. Let's take the blue color now. V3 is what? This is I3 times XC where I3 is what? I3 is I4 plus IC. I4 plus IC multiply 1. I4 is 1 plus 1, 1.1. 1. 1. IC is what? IC is the current through this one. So dividing the reactance is 10. This is connected across which point? Over here. So the voltage across is V4 plus a V5. 1 plus 1.1. 1. 1. This would give you the value of V3 is 1.3. 1.31 1. 1. volts. V4 what we, we two sorry we two would be i2 times xc where i2 is i3 plus a ic i2 is i3 plus ib according to this node i3 plus a ib multiplied one i3 is 1.31 plus ib is the current through this 10 ohm reactance and divide by the voltage is v4 plus v5 plus v3 V5 plus V4 plus V3. Do the calculations. V2 comes out to be 1.65 volts. V1 is I1 times XC. I1 is I2 plus a IA. I2 plus IA multiplied 1. I2 is 1.65 plus IA is the current through this reactance. This is connected over across this point and this point which means over here V5, V4, V3, V2. V5, V2, V3, V4. Divide it by 10. What does this come out to be? V1. V1 comes out to be 2.16. 2.16. Now the total voltage obtained across the string the total voltage obtained across the string would be what? Would be this thing. This comes out to be 7.22 volts. Fine? Yes. Now take a percentage of it. Take your percentage of it. Do I have space over here? Do you see it? Yes, you have. So taking the percentage. Percentage of each. So the first one it would be what? V1. Have a look. 2.16 upon the total is 7.22 multiplied 100%. Similarly, the second would be 1.65 upon 7.22. The third would be 1.31 upon 7.22. The fourth would be 1.1 upon 7.22. And the fifth would be 1 upon 7.22. And the percentage is that it gives you is what is is 30 percent 22.8 percent 18.2 15.2 and 13.8 so these are the percentages that each disk is taking out of the total voltage now in the previous example we came till this step because the given line voltage was not given over here we are given so we can find out their exact values so as the given voltage is given v is equal to 100 by root 3 to, to, to convert it into the phase voltage this would be about something 76 it is uh, this is 57 57.7 57.7 kilovolt is your phase voltage. So you calculate, you can calculate your V1 now. V1 is what? V1 is 30% of 57.7. So 30% of 57.7. Similarly, V2 is 22.8% of 57.7 v3 is 
18.2 percent of 57.7 v4 is 15.2 percent of 57.7 v5 is 13.8 divided by 100 multiplied by 57.7 let me write down these values let me write down these values 17.3 13.6 17.3 kilovolts 13.6 kV 10.5 8.7 10.5 and 7.96 kilovolts all of them this is how you find it similarly you can find out your string efficiency and how is that how is that so the string efficiency is given by the total voltage across the string total voltage which is the phase voltage 57.7 divided by the number of discs which are 5 multiplied by the voltage at the nearest disc to the line conductor which is v1 which is 17.3 kilovolt my efficiency comes out to be something around 66 percent let me check yes it is so i believe that is it for this video i finish it over here we may have some more examples in the book we may have a little bit of a more discussion if i put a guard ring into this and how do we do it by this method but i will not go into more detail why because then that becomes a topic of high voltage transmission so basically we are not interested in that the thing is why do why are we discussing these overhead line insulators are because uh, this is the the example or the application of a solid insulation the gas insulation we discussed through a problem of circuit breakers then the liquid insulation we discussed through the example or application of a transformer oil and now for solid insulation we're discussing it through the overhead line insulators so I believe I will finish this video over here because then we will, uh, di we will divert away from the topic of insulation if we go into more of a detail. In the next video, I believe we talk about uh, insulation coordination. What happens if a lightning strikes a transmission line or a switching surge occurs? Can we save our insulator? Can we save our transformer or not? Let's say we talk about that in the next video. Still then take care. Goodbye.